this is the cinema lounge where we just talk casually about movies relaxing as usual Mm -hmm. Uh, so James finally saw a movie that I saw eons ago and he would like to discuss it with me in greater detail and that movie is yes La La Land ah yes the uh the film uh the the film that uh that got so many wins at the Oscars because it was oh so great and oh so terrific and everything and the critics loved it and then it almost it almost got best picture you know what happened yeah that was just uh damn it's just it's, uh, i mean uh, it does it doesn't it does deserve the rewards they got i will give them props for that but i mean best picture i can understand i have not i've yet to see moonlight so i can give the better of the doubt that moonlight gives credit to that to be the best picture but god damn that whole fiasco just like Give him the right envelopes for fucking once. Not just like this stupid envelope from the previous award being Best Actress in a movie being Emma Stone, which, good for her, she actually got an award for the movie. And then and then that was lampooned uh, mercilessly for uh, for a time. Being, you know, people were taking that Best Picture stub and photoshopping yep. any movie title yeah. on there. And yep, that's, that's, that's uh, our 2017 meme. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what did you think about the movie? Well, uh, one of the uh, just to sort of bridge things a little bit more smoothly there. Okay. Uh, one of the things that they that they said about that was, wow, the uh, the award, the uh, the awards for La La Land uh, kind of ended like the movie, in a sense, a uh, fake happy ending. Mm-hmm. Um, well, did it? Did the movie have a, have a, have a unhappy ending, or was it, or a fake happy ending, or did it have both? Well, let's sort of stop, let's sort of sit back and think about, about the film for a bit. Uh, we have, we have a film that's essentially a love story between Ryan Gosling's character uh, who's a jazz musician uh, who wants to preserve jazz as a as a, as a, a genre as an art form he's I hate to say it but it's true he is a bit of a jazz snob mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, he's he's just a He's, he's the type of person that says no no it can't it can't change or what have you we have to it has to be absolutely like this Emma Stone is an aspiring actress mm -hmm. uh, and so these two people meet during the course of the film they uh, very early on they hit it off they become they become an item in the whole film is there is a story about their relationship with one another and uh, and how um, uh, sort of the but let's just say it's 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 not a it's not as terrible of a relationship as as it could have gone but it's not a smooth one either I think we should I think we could, we could put it that way um, I like the, I like the nod, the, uh, I like the cinematography in the film. That was, that was very nicely done in terms of, you know, capturing the scenes and whatnot. I was picking up on, I was picking up on, uh, color, color schemes. The, the use of color in the, in the film was very, very prominent in terms of, in terms of staging and making characters, uh, and and making characters uh, pop out against their backgrounds in a lot of scenes, especially when it was when it was important to notice. Uh, one scene that I that I particularly want to break up, where I I really felt like color was was used strongly, was one scene where they're 
uh, they're having an argument with each other in in his apartment or, or in their apartment and uh, the background lighting uh, they're um, they're sitting at the dinner table and behind them the background lighting is on the on the um, on the windows is a very strong green, but mm-hmm. the lo- the lighting on on the subjects is in red. Uh, Jocelyn and Emma Stone. Uh, that's right. That's right. And as as I'm sitting back and watching this, I'm just sort of thinking, these are this is this has to be a very very deliberate choice. Yeah. You you know. When you're a DP, you have to you have to look for these sort of things and say, "Hey, how can I separate this one thing from another?" But this these two colors are so different from each other. And don't get me wrong, they they accommodate they accommodate each other nicely, but they they're at the they are at different points on the spectrum wheel. You know, red, green, blue. Well, we're just sticking with. As much green as possible, and what, and as much red as possible, and it's almost—it's practically silhouetting them against it, against the green, as an effect. And I think uh, when you do that, it sets a tone for the scene that it's supposed to be cathartic, but it's—it's very—it's very suggestive in that sense. So that's where the film works. The musical numbers, I like the. I liked the dancing. I liked how it was, for the most part, very traditional in terms of uh, in terms of a musical approach, at least for the first half. And then, yeah, let's. Uh, but outside of that, I I think the movie is just sort of good, not great, but good, because. Let's be honest here. The movie has some issues. I think. And feel free to defend the film if you can here, Mike. I probably will. Um, uh, Emma Stone is okay singing. Ryan Jostling is not much of a singer. He's a terrific <laughs> piano player. Yeah, let me... Okay, so with that, I mean, that... That does make sense. Yeah, they're not the greatest of singers. That, that I can understand. But they do good for what they can do. That's fine. It's and it's it's, fu- it's funny because uh, there's on his trailer for La La Land from Screen Junkies, and they poke fun at that where they said that <laughs> uh, acting the singing from the actors is not is just so bad compared to teaching a singer to act. Because John Legend was in here, he for his acting job, so he was a musician acting, and he was pretty good in the movie. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, John Legend. We'll get to we'll get to him, but go on. But yeah, so yeah, uh, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling singing is um, it's not that great, but it's just good enough for the movie. Like it's it, it's like they're trying to go for just people who are normal singers, but not. Not, not terrific singers. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, not people who are classically trained to sing. I mean, they're they're just trying to go for a natural kind of approach. I mean, the original people who were gonna be who were gonna be cast or was trying to be casted in before Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling was Emma Watson and Miles Teller from Whiplash, the Damien Chazelle's previous movie. And uh, Emma Watson. Uh, passed on this so she could go sing uh, adequately in uh, in other movies like Beauty and the Beast. And exactly, and fun fact, uh, Ryan Gosling was supposed to be doing the Beast, but he turned that down to be a La La Land. Oh boy! So that's kind of a fun fact for you. But yeah, I can understand what you mean by the singing by the two leads. So, and the major problem, actually, the bigger problem I think here was. Uh, the dancing I said was great, but the sound mix uh, when it when it came to the the actual songs, I thought 
I was watching this with my family, mm -hmm. and we thought it was just our TV. We, uh, but we could, while we, they have that terrific, extravagant number in the beginning, um, with all the people dancing on the cars and everything, no one could understand what anyone was saying. And we thought it was just our TV cracking up, but no, we tried to adjust the sound on the TV, and uh, yeah, it felt like it felt like there was uh, that there was something there was something wrong there. There was something off about the mix, and it continued throughout several other songs as well. Um, not when they were singing solo, but any time that there was a lot of intense action going on in the scenes, it would always be the background noise uh, or sound effects overlapping over the singing. And I found that particularly distracting because I'm loving what I'm looking at, but I can't hear anything. I thought this was only the problem that we were having watching. And then I realized that actually, no. I sat down and I, I watched uh, Leon Thomas of Renegade Cut. He did a he did a review of the film, and he had one of the exact same critiques of it. Uh, the the background noise is coming up and and overlapping the music. I uh, did you get did you get that sense at all? I don't think I did. I don't think. Were I Were you ever... listening for the lyrics? Because I can understand a thing. Okay, I, I'm trying to think, like, I th I can probably understand that, but when I was watching the movie, I th I've seen the movie twice, and I don't think I ever had that problem. Like, I could understand the lyrics, more or less. Like, I, yeah, there were some parts where you, it was kind of uh, quiet and stuff like that. I mean, um, let me, I'm going to double check here, actually, because... I think if it's like the that's interesting. I don't know. Let me double check something here. Shush you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I kind of okay. Yeah, okay. I see. Yeah. It's a. The, I only barely made out what was. Yeah, the vocals being said. Yeah, there. yeah, the vocal. Sound. Yeah, the vocals are kind of like. A bit lower than the instrumental and everything else in the background. I can understand that. Okay, yeah, that I did not realize after watching it twice. Yeah, I was fine with it, but that wasn't a big problem for me. I guess sound mixing for me didn't doesn't really click in my head as much when watching a movie. Well, when you have two ears to listen to, it's a little bit different. <laughs> sorry, that was sorry. That was that was low. <laughs> No, but yeah, I mean the first uh, the first time I saw it in the theaters, and the second time I actually found a a copy of it to watch, and actually, bad. <laughs> you're a bad boy. I, the second time I actually watched it with my girlfriend Steph for our first uh, uh, screening together. So she wanted to see it, and we watched it together, and she she enjoyed it. She even cried at the end. Okay. Uh. In uh, in terms of uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the overall enjoyment of the film, I had to get I I looked around. I wanted to see I wanted to see what uh, uh, what people were saying about the film, just to just to bounce off of other critiques of it mm -hmm. or analyses. Um, yeah, it gave me a reason to watch uh, Renegade Cut again for the for the first time I'd seen it, uh, any episodes of uh, that show in a long time. And um, I just, I, 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 mind you, I just think the movie's good. Um, but I, I, um, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of dumbfounded. Uh, I'm kind of dumbfounded by some of the critiques that, that he came up with. This was something that I was not even thinking of when I was watching the movie. Uh, the white savior cliche.
Uh, yeah, Leon Thomas brings this up in his review about how about how Ryan Gosling is uh, is playing the white savior of jazz music in the in the film. Oh. And uh, oh. and as a con- as a contrast to that, John Legend is the is the sellout. Like this is the kind of thing that the movie is trying to preach is that is that jazz is sacred, and uh, and cannot be touched. Uh, but this is what uh, this is what uh, John Legend is doing. And I realized this is why I don't watch his show so much often anymore because when people make when people make uh, assertions like that uh, about movies, this is what I hated about going to college. And watching movies and watching movies with professors who would essentially say the same type of thing it it's not it's their it's their interpretation of it but god the no one no one watching these movies is there daring to think about bringing race into the equation exactly but you you have the audacity sir to sit back and complicate things by doing so oh, yeah, in I mean, levels that, in levels that your, uh, that even your audience is not, uh, either doesn't pick up on or just doesn't care. Yeah, I think. In with, fact, it's kind of it's kind of slightly racist to to make these assertions. I, I think with especially with Leon and other critics who, or professors that do that, they that that's probably their own interpretation of what they think that means. But the filmmaker probably didn't have that attention in the first place. I mean. They're thinking with a very critical and analyzing mind when it comes to the movies. They're trying to break it down to another level, but for most of us, we can also analyze these movies, but not that deep down. Mm. I think that's pushing it a little too far. I mean, you're going a little too deep with these movies. I mean, some of these movies are, you know, just for entertainment's sake. I mean, some might have a meaning to them, some don't. If... If it was something very, very slight, they might be able to say, oh, he's just the, oh, John Legend is playing the black friend character or something like that. Yeah. Um, or the the best, that to- token whatever race. Uh, I'm sitting back and watch. maybe you can make that argument, but I'm sitting back and watching the movie and just, th- just not even thinking about that. But in terms of the ideologies that are being that are being espoused in this film no one I, I don't think I don't think the film comes to a, a strict conclusion about jazz music no or does it I don't think so and that's the thing like um I don't think it does like I see one and that's what I appreciate about it uh because Jocelyn's character says this is this is how jazz is supposed to be it's very traditional yada 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 john legend is saying jazz needs to evolve and be like this or be like this this new genre and i and neither of these opinions are are above one another no just because jostling is the lead that does not make him inherently right in fact uh in fact, he he's arguably he's arguably wrong about a few things. Yeah, that makes but, him um, really human as a character. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. Like at the end of it all, like he, like the movie. What I th- like about it, they cut to two paths of Hollywood slice of life, more or less, where you get the aspiring actors trying to get into the world of acting, and you get the musicians who's trying to keep music. The way he wants it to be. I mean, he wants to be a jazzist. He want to. He wants to open a club. You know, he wants to have that jazz thing to beat himself. And of course, eventually, he meets up with his friend, played by John Legend, and he, he's got like a some of a love hate relationship with the guy because I don't think he's like a personal best friend, but he's just an acquaintance of the guy. And he's you know he gives gives an offer to get more money and be on tour with the band, and that's the point where. Uh, Sebastian, the character Ryan Gosling plays, he just thinks like, what should I do? Should I keep doing what I want to do or should I just do it for the money? And he does, quote, sell out and d- does that, per se. 
of course, he's traveling, touring, and he doesn't see Mia, played by Emma Stone, a lot. So eventually, down the road, he's like, you know what? I'm just done with it, and ends up going to, to open the club later on in the movie. So, and yeah, the so this is it's not it's not a, a movie that set that set out to preach a certain point. It's just sort of to say, this is what happened. These characters went there. They're separate. They they went their separate ways at the end. I'll agree that I'll agree that one. Uh, that ending, when it when it goes to when it cuts between that section of their lives, and then suddenly it jumps to six years later when he's got his when he's got his club and she's got her career and a family, and. Uh, you're you're kind of left wondering what what was the last thing that made them split in between. It's a little bit it's a little bit jarring in that aspect. Well, but it, that's that's not the thing though. Like the, uh, that's true. You kind of think kind of wonder about that. But you know, the last time they were talked is was when Mia goes to Paris for her movie to go act in, mm -hmm. and then after and they it's assumed when they cut is that after that movie she got really popular and she gets more movies she's an actress now and she doesn't hook up with Sebastian again she, she just doesn't like go back to that because she's on a roll with her career right now and Sebastian's like they're like okay I, I, I got to open my club and he's doing great with his club and you know and so when they, they both they just do it is thing. a happy ending they both got their they both got they, what they wanted they just didn't get it with each other exactly and when they first see each other for the first time in years, they they look at each other, and that's when the quote "would have been" sequence comes up, and you see what could have been between them, you know. And that sequence alone is kind of cool when they show everything, little details like that, and then pop back to reality. That's the that's the Hollywood ending versus the. Um, I'm not gonna say it's the more realistic ending but trying to be the more realistic ending yeah it's not and yeah sometime and the movie just if there's any point that the that the movie has to make it's that it's exactly that you can get where you're you can get where you're going maybe but just not how you planned yeah and the thing is that I, I kind of don't consider what they have a relationship, per se. I think what they had together through everything was... Because, I, I like, IMDb and then everyone else sums up the plot as being, being a relationship. I just think they're just two people that met each other, hang out together, and try to have their lives. Just, you know, hanging out in general. Like, because Mia... It was at a dinner with a boyfriend or a friend and decides, oh, crap, screw it. I'm just going to go to the theater in my high heels going to see that A Rebel Without a Cause with Ryan Gosling to Sebastian. I mean, and they hold hands for a bit. They, I don't think they ever kiss. Like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Like, I don't think it's a relationship. I think they just coexist with each other as they try to survive Hollywood. Mm, it felt maybe it was just me, but it it felt like there was there was um, more chemistry in between them, or at least that they were at least that that's what they were lead, leading up to. I mean, you, you could feel that chemistry because you know there's there's that whole scene in the Griffith so, Observatory where they're um, dancing. Yeah, this is the this is the movie for me. Um, I just saw it once, maybe thought it thought it was good, and I can chalk it off as saying, yeah, I saw it. There's gonna be, but there's gonna be as there's other movies out there that I consider classics. This isn't one of them. Yeah, I mean, I can agree that uh, it's your not... your two cents. 
Yeah, it's not particularly going to be a, a new classic among people. I mean, it could be when it comes to musical people, but it's 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 a story that I can you know watch over and over. Like I I liked it for what it was, and like I said, the cinematography, like you said, was great. The music I thought was okay. I didn't mind the sound edit uh, mixing. I guess now thinking about it now that they, they should have mixed it differently now. Um, the chemistry between Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone is perfect because they've already been in two movies together before and that's why they were cast together because their chemistry is so good between each other. Acting is great between each other. And the ending, of course, was trying to be a little bit different than the norm with having an ending that mm -hmm. doesn't give a uh, happy ending but just gives them an alternative ending like sometimes we don't hook up at the end. I just give him props for being doing something a little bit different with the ending, and you know it's a you don't see a lot of musicals uh, as of recent like La La Land. Yeah. Uh, the uh, I guess not, but uh, I'll stick with my I'll stick with my. Um, NBC broad live broadcasts <laughs> for now. <laughs> Dear God, yeah, the whole s television musical stage perform ah bullshit. God damn. I mean, those are okay at most. I like it. I do. I do. Yeah, it's the the, the one scene. Hey, how about that Dirty Dancing remake? I have yet to see that. I have yet to fucking see that. I, that, first, uh, the 80s movie that should not have been remade. And yet they did it twice. No, that was a sequel. That wasn't a... That was a sequel? That was a sequel, more or less. That wasn't... I had never seen that one actually. That's kind of funny. Dairy Dancing Havana Nights. I've never seen that, but kind of intrigued by that. Um, but no, freaking NBC like has the balls to remake Dairy Dancing, and it's a three-hour movie, three hours, and it's only like a hour and a half, two-hour movie. But no, you just extend it to three hours long. Then you have a nobody that plays Patrick Swayze's character. As a complete nobody actor, like he he was like he hasn't done anything. Then you got Abigail Brenzen, I believe, who plays Jennifer Grey's character, Baby, which I don't mm -hmm. she's okay as an actress, but uh, why? She uh, she outdid her brother Spencer <laughs> at the very least. I tell you, I mean I, I mean, mean and the it's... least they could have done was I, I watched part of it after the broadcast and I I was particularly dozing off. But the least they could have done if they're gonna if they're gonna call it a musical, at least try and make it a musical. Not just not just okay, we set it we set this up for this uh, particular song to be sung at this uh, point in time and they're on stage, so therefore that counts as a musical. No, it does not. No, I think they turn it into a musical because it, Dirty Dancing was never a musical in the first place. Like, Dirty Dancing was a basic, like, duh, dance movie? It's a, dance movie? More of a dance movie. I was, if I could have said dance movie as the loose term because, yeah, Patrick Swayze teaches Jennifer Grey to dance and they have that big dance thing at the end, but it's just, it's, it's a mostly like a romantic dance movie at most with a great soundtrack from the 60s because it's set in the 60s. Uh -huh. So I don't know how you turn it into the musical. I mean, you try to write in songs for that or sing the song soundtrack. I don't even know. It's like it's like it's like freaking remaking Flashdance and turning it into the musical. Yeah. Makes makes some damn sense. Yeah. They did that better with Footloose, the musical. Let me put it that way. 
I'll, I'll give you props for that. I mean, they've. I I do have a soft spot for the for both movies. I didn't complain about it. I mean, I I would have tried to, to keep Zac Efron somehow as the lead, but now you get this kid that I don't even know. He's been in other stuff since then. I can't remember his name, but but it's it, it, I yeah. I feel like they just they just kind of like transition it from the Midwest to like the South. And that kind of makes sense, like, trying to make it more country than anything else. I, I, I kind of dug, dug it the way they did it. It's like, oh, that's more southern and country. I mean, Blake Shelton did the cover of Footloose, so I thought that was pretty nice when they did that. But they, add, they but they add, they, with the Footloose remake, they try to change things up, like the, uh, the chicken tractor scene in the originals turn into like this school bus race with the guys whatever it, it's just it's, yeah all right i think we're plenty off topic here so we can bring this to a close yeah so uh what did you guys think of la land please leave a comment below and actually wait a minute i could do polls now so in the right hand corner you can click over there you can click yes or no if you like la, -La land <laughs> we can a... do polls on youtube yes you can james you could put a poll in the corner so people can vote <laughs> it's a new thing oh boy you gotta show me this after we're done i, I will man i will so I thank you for listening and watching us ramble about La, La Land and other miscellaneous stuff. And uh, what other topics would you like my, James and I to talk about? <laughs> Leave a comment below. Uh, thank you for listening and watching, and I'll see you next time. Adios, amigo. Ciao for now.